that I would like to tell you a story of translational medicine today. And he starts by introducing David. Seven years ago, a gymnastic accident left him completely paralyzed. So now, when David's brain sends a command to the executive center in the spinal cord, the signal is weakened when it passes the injury, and he cannot activate his muscles. However, if we model this kind of injury in animal model, what we observe is that there are always some spare nerve connections, some anatomically intact fibers, yet functionally completely silent. You can see them in white, some passes the injury in red, but the animal remains completely and permanently paralyzed. And for the past 13 years, the main goal was to promote axon regeneration in order to restore walking. We thought about the problem completely differently. We really focused on the lumbar executive center, way below the injury. They are completely intact, but they are missing the source of modulation and excitation that are necessary for them to be functional. So our idea was simple. Just provide the spinal cord with a type of signal information that the brain would deliver naturally in order to walk. So we found the receptor subtypes that are specific for the locomotor system, which we mimic with pharmacological cocktail of serotonin agonist. And to provide excitation, we apply electrical stimulation. It was very simple at the time. Electron on the dorsal aspect of the spinal cord stimulate continuously, but the synergy was incredibly powerful. The animal was supposed to be paralyzed, now it's walking. We turn off the stimulation, it can't walk. Turn it back on, and immediately the spinal cord is producing this automated locomotor movement. At this stage, I could have jumped to clinical application, but I really wanted to understand the underlying science. So we spent quite some energy to understand what do we really stimulate in the spinal cord. Here, what we found is that this stimulation that looks very unspecific is actually very specific, because the signal, electricity, will go around the spinal cord and will activate these beautiful nerve bundles. They are the fibers coming from the receptors in your muscle that control, measure the amount of lengthening of the muscle. This means that now, because we know the mechanism, we can operate a transition from a stimulation that was very continuous, empirical, to really targeting these individual routes that you see very nicely, to really activate the spinal cord as the brain would do naturally in order to walk. With many challenges, and the first one was to bring the spatial selectivity. So here we develop a next generation of neural interfaces. These are all entirely stretchable silicone membrane, even the electrodes are stretchable, and they can last very long time in the central nervous system. The second challenge was to bring time. The stimulation must be synchronized with the movement. So here we developed like the Swiss wash precision in delivering the stimulation. So here you have the animal completely paralyzed. We applied the continuous stimulation, as I showed you before, and he can walk. But because it's so early after the injury, at some point the animal will collapse. This is when we turn on this targeted spatiotemporal stimulation. And immediately we will now reanimate the limb movement, increase the vigor of the movement, and enable the animal to walk again. And at this stage, I felt we understood enough of the science to move from the sophisticated lab environment to the clinical applications. We've, as you can imagine, a series of challenges. I'm not going to pass on all of them, but one very important was to have the actual technology. We needed really to target all the individual roots in the spinal cord. So we have this you know, soft silicone membrane going against the spinal cord to target the roots, and it's connected to an implantable pulse generator which is completely wireless and controlled in real time. It's very important for us because you understand we have a very sophisticated stimulation procedure. So we you know, put the person upright, we measure the residual kinematic with video, and on this basis, we send these electrical pulses that are going to activate the spinal cord as the brain is trained to do. How does it work in real life? So this is David. Stimulation on means we are delivering this electrochemical stimulation that are synchronized with the movement. Stimulation is off, it can't walk. Back on, and immediately is reconnected 
with the executive center in the lumbar spinal cord. And I wait my word, is we connected? We don't induce movement, we enable him to control the movement. And you see this in that video, in which with his left leg, which is normally completely paralyzed, we ask him to make normal step, and then very large steps, but without changing the stimulation. Small steps and no very large steps. So you see that his brain has an adaptive control over the activity of his otherwise paralyzed muscles. And this occurred because we understand the science. This is really something I want to emphasize, because if we stimulate continuously, as we used to do in rodents, it does not work. It can't work. Hence the importance of the scientific understanding, which sometimes we forget, and we jump too far rapidly to clinical application. Why is it important? Because then we can train David, and not you know, automatically in an exoskeleton, but actively with will-powered and real activation of the circuitry. And the result is very surprising and unexpected. Because not only it improves with the stimulation, but even after a few months of training, what you observe is a recovery without stimulation. So here is, after two months, the first time he can activate his muscles that were paralyzed for seven years. A little bit. After three months, a lot more. This is a full extension against the direction of gravity. A few months later, Davin can take a few steps over ground without stimulation, without this robotic support. And here, you know, the only explanation for this neurological recovery, that although it was not our goal to promote the growth of new nerve fibers, this is what this kind of therapy is doing. And indeed, we have all the evidence in preclinical model of a massive reorganization of the neural connections. This said, our patients, they were still a lot better with the stimulation. So we wanted to provide them with the opportunity to use this kind of system for, as a prosthetic use outside the lab. So for this, there's a proof of concept, but we have a stimulation system that you wear around the waist. You can control it with a watch that responds uniquely to the voice of the patient and some you know, inertial measurement unit that measures the thought movement. Take decision how to stimulate, meaning communicate wirelessly with the implantable stimulation system. And this is how it looks like. Stim on. OK, start message sent to implant. So now, after seven years of paralysis, David, with the stimulation on, so this is real-time control stimulation of the central nervous system, can regain the ability to take steps outside in an ecological settings. And you may think that this is a promotional movie, so I want to show you that it is real life. Last Sunday, thank you. Last Sunday, there was a world run organized by the Red Bull Foundation, Wings for Life. And David lined up with all the others to run for those who can't walk with the stimulation on. pretty emotional moment for us to see that he can use this stimulation in these settings. Although we're still very much aware that this is the first steps of only six patients so far. So it's still a long journey, but I am committed to reach 1,000. And this is why also I have a startup to really build the technology for these patients. And in this process, I want to think bigger. The stimulation, no, you know, is difficult to control, it's not practical. So why if we connect directly the human brain to the stimulation system. Do you think it's impossible? No. So let's look at a glimpse to the future. Here, we inserted electrodes in the leg region, in the leg region of the motor cortex to record spiking activity and decode the motor intention. And we are sending this information wirelessly in real time to the spinal cord stimulation system, the same as we have in humans. So this is a brain-spine interface. And if we look now in this model of transient paralysis, you see the animal cannot use his right leg. And when we turn on this digital bypass between the brain and the spinal cord, just thinking about the movement, the animal is stimulating himself and regains the ability to walk. 
He will do so until we stimulate, turn off, and then he can't walk. So this looks like science fiction, but this is happening. And you know, if I just provide you, where could we be in 10 years? While well, somebody has a spinal cord injury, immediately we would insert system to deliver the pharmacology directly to the spinal cord, probably a very small system, together with you know, an electrical stimulation system, very soft, minimally invasive, with this very uh, sophisticated pulse generator, communicates very rapidly and in real time. And in the same surgery, you do want to have more tissue connections. So we are working very hard now in adding repair interventions. In the same surgery, you really would like to have this minimally invasive brain recording system in order to be able to decode the motor intentions, which then we would link to the stimulation system, enabling people to really train actively as soon as possible to increase the repair process. That's you know, still a dream at this stage. But what I've learned in 15 years of translational medicine is that you are only as great as your imagination and as big as your dream. So see you in 10 years. Onward.